This is the Voice Coach Podcast for all the tips and tricks on getting the most out of your speaking voice. I'm Nick Redman and I'll be sharing everything you need to know to keep your voice healthy, sounding great and working the way it should. If you're an actor, voiceover, speaker, presenter or podcaster, you're in the right place. Hopefully it'll be a wee bit of crack too. Let's get started. Stay hydrated, folks. (laughs) You'll hear that a lot. (laughs) So it's all well and good hearing this term warm up bandied around and saying that you need to warm your voice up before you use it. But how do you do that? She says, scratching her chin. I mean, I'm sure there are some people who are like, I don't even know what a warm up is. I don't know where to start. Do I just do some weird tongue twisters like something from Eliza Doolittle? I think it can really help to start by defining what we mean by warm up. From my point of view and my experience, it's really beneficial for context just to compare the idea of a warm up, a voice warm up, to the idea of a voice workout. Now, I'll explain this a bit more. I learned this useful nugget from a fella called Dane Chalfin, who is basically a ruddy, excellent voice rehab wizard who I've done lots of additional training with during my continued development as a coach. I think it's easy to think that if you spend lots of time warming up your voice, that you're doing a good job warming up. And I know that personally, I don't have much time to warm up before the speaking work begins on most days. Or, you know, it might actually be that situation in which you have to speak doesn't allow you time to warm up at all, like if you're a presenter or a public speaker or whatever. So what I really want to do with this episode is make sure people know what a warm-up is, that a warm-up doesn't have to take ages, and it shouldn't really, and that there are still things you can do which really benefit your speaking voice in a smaller chunk of time. So to go back to this idea of warm-up versus workout, a vocal warm-up should prepare you to do the work. That's it. It should get all of the elements of vocal production released, energised, awakened, pepped, primed and ready for action. A workout, on the other hand, is something very separate. It's when you take time to explore and develop specific elements of voice production. And don't get me wrong, this is often necessary and it's certainly a lot of the work I do with coaching clients one-to-one. You know, maybe you need to improve your breath control. Perhaps you're working on expanding your expressive range. Or maybe it's an articulatory feature that someone has told you is just terrible and making you sound... Insert rude individuals, unwanted accentism, tainted nonsense here. (laughs) Sorry, I I digress. That's for another episode. Keeping your opinions on someone's voice to yourself. (laughs) Yes, I do have the potential to be a wee bit so boxy (laughs) on behalf of all my diversely and interestingly voiced clients. Anyway, a voice warm up is not a voice workout. It's not about spending a lot of time using your voice. It's about getting your voice ready to be used. I do a lot of warm-up tweaking with one-to-one coaching clients. Many people have warm-ups that have been set in stone since drama school or teenage singing lessons or from tutorial videos on the internet. But the thing is that a warm-up needs to be responsive to how your voice feels in the moment, that day, before you start your work, your speaking. It also needs to be completed with mindfulness and presence and I know that mindfulness is a bit of a buzzword at the moment, but it's incredibly important for voice work and learning in general, really. And if you're interested in mindfulness and voice, I'd really recommend looking up the work of Christina Shewell and Barbara Houseman, who are two flipping amazing practitioners who I've done some stuff with, doing lots of research into that at the moment. So anyway, the warm up versus workout thing is important to me because some of the stuff I see of people sharing of what they do to warm up on the internet feels more like a workout in terms of length. It feels like you're spending a bit too long. There's people saying they're spending 30 minutes to an hour warming up to get ready. And for me, 30 minutes to an hour is more of a workout. It's not necessary for a warm up. A warm up can be, you know, literally five to 15 minutes. So not only should this warm-up be completed with focus and awareness, which is why it doesn't need to be long, it needs to have an understanding of how you're feeling in the moment, like I said, but it kind of needs to go in a specific order to have optimal efficiency so that you get the most out of what you're doing, basically. I'm going to outline this order with the proviso that the elements are never completely separate. The do and can overlap. So it can go a little bit like this uh, to start with. So... 
you want to be working through these four or five stages loosely. Physical release, breath, resonance or tonal quality, articulation and words. Right, I'll repeat that in case you're a note taker. (laughs) Physical release, breath, resonance or tonal quality, so the voice itself, articulation, words. And for this to make sense, I think it helps to understand on a really basic level how the voice is made. So here comes the sciencey bit. And by science, I mean like P1 science. Oh, hang on, that's really Irish. Um, <laughs> kindergarten, first grade, if you're in America. Reception, if you're in the UK. Like four, four or five. Four or five-year-old science of the voice. Here we go. So breath from the lungs travels up through the windpipe hits the larynx and makes the vocal folds vibrate. Those vibrations travel up through the vocal tract, which is basically the space that starts at the vocal folds and ends where sound leaves the body at the lips and the nostrils. So the vibrations travel up the vocal tract and are shaped by the cavities through which they travel, or the spaces. So that's the pharynx or the throat, oral and nasal cavities. Those are the spaces through which the voice can travel. Now, those vibrations then go through the air, hit our eardrums, and that becomes the voice that we hear. Now, that's the trippy science bit I'll never fully understand. (laughs) It's your classic, if a tree falls in the wood and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? Adage. I'll leave that to the scientists. But the point is, there's a lot more involved in making voice than just the buzzy bit in the middle of your neck. There's the breath which in turn involves many parts of the whole body. There's the larynx and then all the bits in between the larynx and where the sound comes out. And that's what this structure sort of takes into account, you see. It's like prepping the body, then the breath, which is housed in the body, then the vocal folds, which turn the breath into vibrations, and then the vocal tract, which helps those vibrations resonate or buzz and take on particular tonal qualities and eventually become the voices that we hear. Oh God, I need a wee drink after all that science. There's a whole load more to it, but I figured although this might be the place, that this really wasn't the time just right now. (laughs) We'll get to that in future episodes. Once we formed a really strong bond as podcaster and podcast E. Okay, so you want to give your body a wee bit of attention. Let's go back to the structure now. Physical release first. Give your body a wee bit of attention before you do anything else. That could just come from your morning yoga session, to be honest, if you do one. Or a walk, if you have a bit of a morning walk or a run. It's about getting the body going and released and aware and energised. Or it could be a few spine rolls and some neck and shoulder stretches. Anything that helps you release some of the tension and the holding in the body. Then you should think about breath. So this is step two. Physical release, then breath. Now, the good thing is that you can incorporate some breath into your body work. And this is what I mean by these five stages overlapping. Breath awareness is really key to a lot of physical practice and can help with that element of mindfulness that I mentioned before is essential to being part of a beneficial warm up. Once you've become aware of the breath, then you can start to work in a few exercises that focus the breath and encourage consistent airflow. So that can be as simple as your classic lip trill, which is a back pocket exercise for all voice users and should be, or maybe a nice gentle buzzy hum up and down your vocal range if you struggle with lip trills right now. So a kind of a hmm, nice and gently, and I'm just chewing my face around while I do that. Very attractive. The first of many attractive exercises I shall walk you through (laughs) during this podcast. Oh, the crack we will have. So the humming and the lip trills is you getting the vocal folds oscillating and creating the vibrations that'll become voice. Those vibrations are affected by the shape and the quality of the spaces through which they travel, which is an element of what we call resonance in voice land. Now, it's sort of similar to how musical instruments work. So like a clarinet sounds different to a flute because they're made of different materials and are different shapes. There's a lot more to resonance (laughs) and I'll go into it in a future episode for you, but I've linked to a couple of articles in the show notes if you're interested in reading more about it now. But for now, the most important thing to know about resonance is that in order to get the most out of these vibrations that you create at vocal fold level, 
is that you need to release as much tension in the vocal tract as you can with various stretches and release work. So at this stage in the warm up, we've done a bit of body work, we've done a bit of breath work. I think it's really beneficial to start doing a few stretches and some release work for the articulators. That's the tongue, the lips, the jaw and the soft palate, the movable articulators, so that the articulators can then shape the sound nice and freely with ease and also to ensure that the tension in the vocal tract doesn't actually dampen the vibrations and subsequent vocal potential. As Kristen Linklater said, one of the queens of our industry, uh, tension murders vibrations. Very dramatic. But it's true. And voice is just vibrations at the end of the day. So we don't want that. (laughs) We want as many of those vibrations as possible. So you want to put in some release work here of the vocal tract. So like yawns are really good for releasing the constrictor muscles at the back of the pharynx or the throat as the voice passes up there. Uh, Stretches for the tongue root. So really getting rid of that tongue root tension is very beneficial. A few massages for the jaw, for example. Bits and bobs like that. And then once you've released that area, you can explore all the lovely resonance potential you have within the pharyngeal, the oral and the nasal cavities. So uh, that would be the pharyngeal. So in that kind of hooty sort of softer um, space, a bit Yogi Bear perhaps, depending on what you're working on. Uh, Maybe not if you're reading the news (laughs) or maybe if you are reading the news oral resonance. So that's that kind of brighter sound. Hey, hey, right in the middle here, right in the oral cavity. And then the nasal uh, cavity here, which sends me straight back to Northern Ireland. (laughs) But those three spaces are the actual primary spaces that the voice travels through on the way out. And they have very different qualities and they're all very valid for different types of communication. So it's great to have balance of those resonance elements because, you know, you might need access to them depending on what you're communicating. If you're trying to get over the noise in a big banqueting hall or you're trying to do a presentation, you might want something brighter in the nose or in mix of nasal and oral resonance. Or if you're doing something softer on the mic, you might want something a little softer that brings in a bit more of that um, uh, pharyngeal resonance. So it's great to be able to access all of them. Right, next up, step four is the articulation. Shaping the vibrations into recognisable sounds, basically. So we've done some release of the main articulators in prep for maximising the resonance potential in the step just before. So now it's really good to energise those movable articulators, the lips, the jaw, the tongue, the soft palate. And this is where it's really good to have a decent idea of what your voice needs in the moment. So you're not just doing loads of like random tongue twisters for no reason. Example, I know that my weakest point of articulation, not perfect guys, is my lips, which form the bilabial consonants like b, p, m, w. So I need lots of exercises that free those up and encourage good closure of the lips. And I'll work those into my routine most days before I start. But for you, it might be other sounds, you know, or groups of sounds, clusters of sounds. A good way of gaining awareness of what you need is to start noting down the words that you trip up on, really. Can you see like a theme or a pattern emerging in the sounds or clusters of sounds that leave you feeling a wee bit tongue-tied? Then you can sort of pick whatever twister you need and practice it lightly with precision and accuracy and a wee bit of play. You know, keep it nice and playful anytime you need to. Right, finally then, you can get on to your words. And this is sort of the optional fifth step in a warm-up because in reality, it can just be you getting to work. Especially if you're a voiceover, you know, you do your bits and bobs of warm-up for five to 15 minutes and then you just crack on. But if you're acting, you could do a few lines of your text. You could, if you're a presenter or a public speaker, do a wee chunk of the piece that you're going to be speaking. Or if you're a podcaster, you could talk through your intro, for example. It's quite a nice, interesting experiment to take whatever it is that you have to say or speak, and do it out loud before you warm up, and then do it again after you've warmed up, because you can really get a feel for what you're doing in your warm-up and whether it's working for you. Okay, right, that might seem like a lot, having said that warming up shouldn't be a lot, (laughs) but remember, let's break it down. It's basically four steps, with an optional fifth, that do overlap, and With awareness, with practice and a wee black book of exercises for each section, you can play around with all sorts of combinations, no bother, and find yourself an efficient five to 15 minute warm up routine. So just to recap those five stages, physical release of the body, 
bring in the breath, release the articulators in the resonance area, then explore that resonance, get those articulators energised, and then speak your words if you fancy it or you've got some time. Right, now what should you do now, I suppose, is a good way to end. What I would do is look at your warm-up, maybe write it down, if you have one already. If not, hang tight. (laughs) I've got lots coming in future episodes. But can you work out which bits of your warm up fit into the categories that I've outlined there? And are you doing them in the right order? Or are you plowing straight into the tongue twisters as soon as you wake up? See if you can take the warm up you've got. Use this insight and tweak it to be even more efficient and effective. And if you don't have a warm up, just see what stretching your neck and your shoulders might do for you before you speak. And do a wee lip trill and play around with those for a bit. I've got loads of warm-up bits on my YouTube channel under the next quick voice tips playlist, so I'll shove a link in the show notes and you can have a nosy there too. Alrighty, we're done. See you next time for a little more insight and uh, well, hopefully a few more things to explore to improve your speaking. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. To get the most out of your voice, come on over to our free community on Facebook, The Voice and Accent Hub. See you in there.